We built a dual Epic workstation capable of housing four terabytes of memory. So don't move an inch until you hear more about it. Hello everybody and thanks for joining us. Joseph Mundy here with AVA Direct Custom Computers, a leading system integrator and capable of providing up to 2,800 unique configurations. Today we're gonna discuss a dual Epic workstation that is capable of running up to four terabytes of memory. Now, for those of you that use professional workstations, there's always that one component that decides how well your workflow goes as it relates to the workstation. So tell us in the comments what component you rely on the most to get your job done. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering what exactly is in this workstation. So we're gonna go through all the specifications and a couple of other pertinent details that are gonna be useful for you to know with my handy dandy cheat sheet. So the configurator that was used to build this workstation is our AMD Epic workstation. It was actually built by me for my client at a university. They plan to use this for a lot of scientific calculations. I tend to not pry a whole lot in what the exact use case scenario is. I ask more or less to make sure that whatever they're asking me to build for them is going to be in line with what kind of expectations they might have for it. Now, core specifications for the build are Fractal Design Meshify 2, XL. Absolutely has to be an XL when you use these dual Epic workstation boards because they're usually either an extended ATX motherboard or they're a proprietary SSIEEB, which is essentially a fancy acronym for saying that the board's gonna be a lot longer than an extended ATX. And you'll see in the B-roll, I'm sure, that this board actually hangs into the drive bays a little bit. So if you planned on using a build like this and you wanted to max it out with drive bays, we would probably either use a configuration that has drive bays in the basement of the case, or we might use like a hot swap design that has a certain amount of depth to allow us to install both the board and the drives. Again, all depends on configuration. Now the processors are two AMD Epic 7252 eight core processors. The focus on this build was not the core count, it was more or less the amount of bandwidth that this board can provide, and you can get bandwidth for days on any Epic processor you throw in it. I mean, 64 lanes per CPU, you really can't go wrong. It's got a total of 256 gigs of memory, and we spec'd it out to make sure that even though it's starting with 256 gigs of memory, they're gonna have the ability to expand it. Double it is the easiest thing to do, but they can always pull that memory out and if they can find two terabytes uh, worth of sticks eight ways across through all eight dims, it's going to be pricey, but they can do it. The whole point was having the capability for them to add on to it because that's kind of what we do here at AVA Direct. It's the bread and butter of our system building. We don't lock you into a configuration that you purchase. Everything you buy from us is going to have the ability to add to it without you having to add additional funds into the system that kind of negates you putting the money into it in the first place. So it's like back in the day when boards had four DIMMs and four DIMM kits were only available. If you wanted to add more memory, you'd have to pull all four DIMMs out and you'd have to buy a whole new four DIMM kit. So it makes your initial investment pointless for lack of a better term, I guess. Graphics card is an ATX A4000. That's pretty typical in the workstation space to use Quattro cards, especially for things like scientific calculations and computations. However, I do believe this client was looking for something that wasn't going to bottleneck the system as far as GPU performance goes, but they also really needed four monitor support. So in the back of this card, you'll have four display ports that you can use to connect monitors up to 4K at 120 hertz if you have the displays to, to, to do that, but I don't think they're going to really need 120 hertz. If it were me, based on the current price point of monitors, getting a 4K 120 hertz display at a reasonable price point is, is pretty easy to do now without breaking the bank. Power supply is an EVGA G5 1000 watt, very common in a lot of our systems. EVGA makes great power supplies. The heat sinks are made by Dynatron. A lot of you may not know who Dynatron is, but they are huge in the server space. They've made heat sinks and cooling solutions for servers for as long as I can remember. Within the last year, they actually launched a liquid cooled Dynatron cooler that will fit in smaller form factor rack mounts. Really unique for a lot of certain applications. Uh, the model of these heat sinks is the Dynatron A26. And you can see that they're pretty short. And that's generally because a lot of server-based heat sinks and cooling fans are designed to be fit within anywhere between 1U to 3U. Because once you get into a 4U, you really don't need a server grade heat sink. You just need like a low profile heat sink. Noctua is one of the most common heat sinks we use in 4U rack mount systems. The SSDs are a Kingston one terabyte Fury Renegade NVMe SSD. It's PCI Express 4.0. The board doesn't support PCI Express 5.0 anyway. So there's really no point in tossing a 5.0 in. You're just gonna bottleneck. 
and you save some money in the process. It is joined by a Samsung 4TB 870 EVO SATA SSD. So that's great if you have a bunch of data that you're gonna be translating between the main operating system and program disk versus storage. If you're copying data back and forth, or maybe you're using an application that just simply takes advantage of the high throughput of, of flash storage, it's a really good budget-oriented way to make sure that you're not locked into like 50 to 80 meg write times of the hard drive. And a lot of times when universities buy workstations like this, they're wired into a network. So if they really have to offload data, they're just gonna drop it right on their internal network anyway. As far as add-in cards, you will see on the bottom of this system, you got a tiny little guy right there. Uh, that is made by Silverstone and it is a USB-C card. We offer these cards and a lot of the newer builds that we have listed on our site primarily because there's so many different case options we offer, well over like 800 cases, right, across the board, that it is really difficult to get a customer into a board that meets all their needs and a case that meets all their needs, but also have all of the front ports accessible. Boards like this, an Epic board, it's SP3 socket is what it's designated. They don't have USB-C headers on them right now. And that's primarily because server grade boards or workstation boards like this, that's their last focus is front panel devices because people really aren't gonna care about it. But we like to give people the option to have everything working in their system. So that Silverstone USB-C card actually provides a USB-C header on it. So we can make sure that the USB-C on the front of the case is live and working. It's for a business, it makes a lot of sense to make sure that when you sell a product and you look at the final price point, there's not a single thing about it that doesn't work and there's no required explanation as to why. It's just, it really helps to ensure that our configurations feel complete at the end of the day. So now we move on to the segment where we discuss pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. So the pros with this workstation are, well, four terabytes of memory. That's a lot of memory to have available in a system and for somebody that's gonna use it for professional or scientific purposes, it's exactly where you wanna be. Can't think of the last time I worked with somebody that was gonna use a workstation in a university for scientific purposes, and memory was an afterthought. It's usually a one of the primary focuses of any workstation. Next thing is the fact that there, are, there is tons of bandwidth available. You have two Epic processors with 64 lanes a piece, 128 lanes of PCI Express bandwidth. Why would you ever say no to that? Granted, they're only using a single Quattro card, and they have that USB-C midboard card that I discussed previously. But if they ever wanted the option to throw in a bunch of cards, the, you know, it shouldn't be a problem. They could throw in three more A4000s and there's really not gonna be any issues with an 1000 watt power supply, you know, unless they're running something that's 3D intensive and they're gonna draw the TDP out of every single card. They may wanna consider upgrading, but hey, with the beauty of modular power supplies nowadays, that's really simple to do as long as they stick with an EVGA power supply. It would be a matter of disconnecting all the modular cables, getting them into like a 1500 watt that has the same kind of pinout as this particular EVGA model, and they would plug everything in, wire up the new PCIe Express cables, call it a day. Simple enough, right? Another pro, quiet and cool. You can't even hear this thing running from the camera or from my microphone, and that's by no coincidence. You know, I can barely hear the system running. All I can hear is it moving air, and that's like the best thing you could hope for nowadays, especially with components running as hot as they do, <clears throat> RTX 4090. It's that's that's something that we try to really strive for when building our systems is, is adding those little nuances and, and perks of systems like this that really make the purchase worth it and make it enjoyable to own. The last pro I'd like to discuss is the case. Fractal Design makes absolutely incredible cases, no doubt about it. Their Meshify cases are no exception to it. They're almost the exact same design as their Fractal Define 7 Series XL cases, with the exception of the front panel is, well, mesh, hence Meshify. They do that to introduce additional airflow that the otherwise Fractal Define 7 series does not do because of that solid front panel. With systems like this, where you have server grade heat sinks, which you can again see by the B-roll, the fins are oriented to be from right to left. And they do that so when you mount it into a server chassis that typically has a row of fans in the front, the airflow has a path forward that then exits out the rear. Very similar to a lot of heat sink designs that you see in desktops, obviously. Um, but some heat sink designs, they have the orientation vertically because they account for you having some sort of exhaust fan set up on the top. So Meshify for this is absolutely perfect. I don't think they needed the Meshify setup for this. There really isn't going to be a whole lot of generated heat. But I generally tell people, if you're not audibly sensitive to fan noise and you don't need a system to sound 
completely whisper quiet. Granted, I do think this is quiet, but if you're not a stickler for noise, opt for the Meshify over the Define so you don't have to worry about airflow down the line. A lot easier to deal with. Now we will move on to cons, which I only have two, and they're really my own cons. I don't see anything wrong with the system as built, and if I did, I would have discussed that with our customer during the, the configuration process prior to them purchasing. So my first critique is that, you know, it's, it's plain. It's plain looking. It's a workstation. Most workstations aren't going to bedazzle you anyway. And if you have somebody that's buying a workstation where they want that, they'll be upfront about it. And we can add in RGB lights or etched side panels or glass. Granted, uh, there's no side panel on it right now. But if you paid attention to some of the photos and the B-roll we had at the video, at the beginning of the video, uh, it does have a dark tempered glass, which I'm really glad Fractal Design started that trend. They were the first one to release tempered glass where there's a light panel where you can easily see through it like a car window. And then they have a dark tempered glass, which is what you would see in a car that has tinted glass. It's the exact same thing, except it's baked into the glass during the tempering process. There's no film on it. So it is what it is. I would say my last critique, again, of my own personal preference, no liquid cooling. I'm a big fan and proponent of using liquid cooling in systems, especially now that closed loop coolers have come a long way in the last eight years since their launch. Uh, they're way more reliable with certain brands. We have all the data to suggest which ones are reliable and which ones aren't. That's why you'll see in a majority of our configurators, we have the EKWB closed loop coolers as the primary with a performance guarantee. When we tested them, they were by far the closest performa, performer to custom liquid cooling that you could get. That's really hard to do in a closed loop cooler because a lot of the restrictions, whether it's the volume of coolant that's in the closed loop or it's the block size or the pump type, EKWB did a fantastic job at designing that cooler, so much so that we branded it and bought them in bulk so we could offer them at an incredibly competitive price compared to, let's say, you know, the Corsair H170 cooler that's $170. And at that point, you're primarily paying for the fans and you're paying for the pump or the digital design on the reader that's on the pump. So that's my only critique. If this were me, I would have maybe used a slightly bigger case and thrown in a couple of different closed loop coolers, one for the top, one for the rear. A 240 would have sufficed for Epic, no problem. And I want to call it a day. In fact, my home server at home uses a, a triple radiator a closed loop cooler from EK. So that should tell you something. Services that we completed on this system include our premier wire management, which you can see nice and clean. Cables are managed and hidden from view and our premier burn-in and testing process, which for systems like this, we would do something incredibly CPU intensive to ensure that both of those EPIC processors are working prime. And then we would do a basic GPU test for the A4000 because most of these Quadro series cards have an incredibly low failure rate as is. I think within the, within the vicinity of 2020 to 2022, I've only seen maybe three or four Quadro cards come in for repair as, as opposed to the amount of GeForce cards that we see in relation to that. The gentleman that assembled this system is none other than Alex Waisaki. He did a fantastic job with building this system in a way that really produces professional results. I can say that about all of our technicians here, that's why they're working. I don't think we would keep anybody on that was an amateur. Um, but if we do hire people that are, you know, they step up the ladder and they do their jobs well and they build systems like this. So great job, Alex. SKU of the system, if you're interested in viewing specifications on our webpage, the SKU of our system can be found right here. I'll wait, absorb it, drink it in. Okay, this concludes today's AVA Rigs video. Do make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell at the bottom of the video if you wanna stay informed, learn more about what AVA Direct does and see what new products we build next. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day. If you like the PC in this video, be sure to contact our sales team at sales at avadirect.com or you can head over to our website by clicking on the link in the description below. You can choose from many pre-built options, gaming or workstation based, or use our configurator to build a PC of your dreams. Be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe, and don't forget to follow our social media channels at avadirect.com.